Okay, so the Apple Watch Ultra was announced about three or four months ago, and the minute I saw it and all of Apple's marketing about it, I decided that watch wasn't for me. I thought it was way too overkill. I'm not going mountaineering, I'm not running any triathlons, and I'm certainly not going diving. The most extreme thing I would need to do with it would be go to the gym and track my sleep. The only thing that seemed to intrigue me about the Apple Watch Ultra was the battery life of it. But the more I saw it, the more I looked into it and fell into that YouTube rabbit hole of Apple Watch Ultra videos, I started to think, damn, maybe I do want it. So like any logical person would do, I threw $800 at Apple and out of nowhere, four months have gone by. I have some thoughts. Before I get into the nitty gritty of it, I wanna give you a little bit of context on what wearables that came from on my wrist and why I got the Apple Watch Ultra in the first place. Okay, so I had the Apple Watch Series 4 since it came out and I never felt the need to upgrade because I thought every little incremental update that Apple made to the Apple Watch just wasn't worth the extra money for me. And I also did start getting more and more into sleep tracking and my Apple Watch Series 4 would just die before the end of the day anyway. So I switched over to a Whoop band. And if you don't know what a Whoop is, it's basically like a health and fitness tracker that you wear on your wrist. It doesn't have a screen on it, but the battery life lasts like four or five days, so you can actually use it for sleep tracking. The downside, however, of the Whoop band was that it's a $30 a month subscription. And I just got tired of paying $30 a month for two and a half years just to track my sleep. In comes my savior the Apple Watch Ultra. When Apple announced it, the only thing that stuck in my head was that I could use it for sleep tracking and stop paying $30 a month. Since Apple advertised it for 36 hours of battery life, I thought that would be perfect for sleep tracking. Plus, it would offer so much more than my Whoop ever could. I could check my messages, listen to music, and even make phone calls on it. And I know it's a completely different product for a different person, but that was the situation that I was in, so I had to make a decision. And I pulled the trigger, and I haven't looked back since then. Okay, so with my life's back, backstory out of the way, let's get into this thing. Let's start off with the design and more importantly, how it's held up over day-to-day -day use for three months. So the best way to describe the design here is that it's just different. When you see an Apple Watch Ultra, you'll know it's an Apple Watch Ultra. And I'm not sure what gives it away more, the international orange accents on it or just the sheer bulkiness of it. I do have to say, I thought this watch was big when I first saw it and that worried me because I have small wrists and I thought it would just look completely goofy with the watch on. Now, I might still actually look goofy with the watch on, but I've gotten used to it and I think it helps that it's not as heavy as it looks and I've just gotten used to it. It only took me a few hours of wearing it to get used to it and it might still look goofy, but I'm fine with it. So it is what it is. The body of the watch itself is made out of titanium, so it's really durable. I've hit this thing on doorways, my desks, and plenty of things, and there's not a scratch on it to show. I'm not really surprised here because there's literally a video on YouTube of someone hitting this thing with a mallet on their desk and the Apple Watch breaks their desk before it gives in. There's a new programmable action button in that international orange color, and you can set it to do a number of things. I have mine set to just start a workout in one click. The digital crown here is also bigger and is protected by this raised edge. It's supposed to make it easier to use with gloves for those people that are using it for like mountaineering or something like that. And I have to say, it actually is easier to use with gloves. Here in the Chicago winters, I've had a chance to try that out. As for the display, it is 49 millimeters, which is the biggest of any Apple Watch ever. And I do have to say, it's really nice to use. It makes it a little bit easier to navigate. And by the way, swiping the text on this thing is just a pleasure. The screen is actually really nice. It gets up to 2000 nits of peak brightness, which is the same as the iPhone 14 Pros. So if you program your action button to turn on the flashlight on your Apple Watch, it's actually really helpful in a dark room. It just lights up everything. And the display is made of a sapphire crystal, and it's also got a titanium raised lip around it. And I think that just really helps when I have hit it on my desk and doorways and a bunch of things. I think it's really helpful for it to not shatter into a million pieces too. And I do have to say that flat screen on this is one of the things that really attracted me to this watch. I know it's subjective, but I think the flat screen just looks freaking amazing. So speaking of that, there is a few controversial design choices about this watch. For example, that international orange color 
Some people seem to absolutely despise it. I don't really have a problem with it. I don't love it or hate it. I think it's just fine. And the same thing with the bands. Some people really seem to hate the Ocean Band and some people really seem to hate the Alpine Band. However, I have the Ocean Band and I've slept in it for like two or three weeks and I thought it was fine, it was comfortable. But the Trail Loop for me is definitely the most comfortable and it's what I wear the most often. I've also heard some people complain that they've triggered the action button accidentally when they're like bending their wrists or something. Thing. And I've had this thing for four months and it hasn't hindered my range of motion at all and I've yet to trigger the ac action button accidentally at all. That brings me to another point though, is that if you're actually considering throwing $800 at this thing, you probably should go into an Apple store and try one on and just make sure it doesn't hinder your range of motion, just see how it feels on your wrist and to also try out the different bands because like I said, some people hate the Ocean Band, some people love the Ocean Band. I really think you should probably go in and try all this stuff out if you're considering purchasing this. Okay, so the greatest thing for me about this watch, like I mentioned earlier, was the battery life. So Apple advertises it at 36 hours of battery life and I'm easily getting two full days out of it. And that's without the low power mode and that's with sleep tracking and a workout each day. And that's not using the low power mode. Speaking of, there's that ultra low power saving mode or whatever they call it that'll actually get you like days or something of battery life. Granted, it does turn off a lot of features, but still days on an Apple watch, like who would have thought? And I've actually never had an issue with the battery life of this Apple watch. When I wake up in the morning after using it for sleep tracking, I'll put it on the charger while I'm getting ready for work. And then by the time I get ready, about like 45 minutes or so, it's pretty much like fully charged and ready for another two days of use. Not to mention that the charger they give you with the Apple Watch Ultra is also a fast charger. So even if you do get to the end of the day and you've somehow managed to kill the battery, you can throw it on the charger for like 20, 30 minutes and you'll have enough juice to last you the night for sleep tracking. So who is this watch really for? Apple advertises it for extreme athletes like mountaineers, triathletes, and divers. However, I think for those people, the battery life still might not be enough. But the thing is that the companies don't get to decide who the product is for. The consumer does. If you think the Apple Watch Ultra is for you, then it is. Apple's marketing has been great to make it look aspirational to own an Apple Watch Ultra. But nonetheless, like I said, if you really want the Apple Watch Ultra, then I say go ahead and get it. You're really not going to regret it. Definitely go try it on and find out which band you want to get but it has been my favorite purchase of 2022. And let me think about it. It might actually, I think it's actually my favorite Apple purchase ever. All right, so that's pretty much it for me. If you guys like this video, leave a like and consider subscribing. But I do wanna hear what you guys think about the Apple Watch Ultra. So leave a comment down below because I'll be down there kicking it with you guys as well. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.